Hello everyone. In today's topic, we are going to deal about post-harvest handling of foods. To introduce the topic, let us look into agriculture. The advent of agriculture is known to be the key development in human civilization that dates back to millions of years. Even today, a nation's growth, development and productivity greatly depends on agricultural practices adopted. Among all the stages of cultivation, post-harvest handling of the produces is crucial since maximum economic loss occurs at this stage. Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN predicts that about 1.3 billion tons of food are globally wasted or lost every year. Post-harvest loss minimization could be a solution to the existing problem of global food security enabling to meet the growing demand of the constantly increasing population. The objectives after going through this session, you will be able to substantiate on the various post-harvest handling techniques, deduce the critical issues involved in post-harvest loss minimization. Generally, losses in agricultural produces take place in the period between the initiation and the completion of harvesting followed by on-farm losses and post-harvest handling losses. These losses still continue under the agricultural commodity until it reaches the consumer. On-farm losses include post-harvest handling which is a stage subsequent to harvesting closely continued by cooling followed by cleaning, sorting and grading of the commodities followed by packing and transportation and finally storage. Let us discuss about harvesting which is the first step in the processing. Harvesting is the process of collecting the matured crops from the fields either manually or mechanically. Harvesting at the accurate stage of maturity plays a vital role in minimizing the losses as well as in achieving suitable market quality. Maturity stage of the agricultural producers is significant in choosing the apt methods of storage, packaging and processing procedures according to the type of product. The maturity of agricultural and horticultural crops is categorized into two, namely physiological maturity and horticultural maturity. Physiological maturity, it is the stage when a fruit cannot only be used for edible or processing purpose but also if it is capable of further development or ripening after harvesting. Whereas horticultural maturity is a stage when the agricultural produce meets the essential requirements for consumer use. At this stage the produce is ready for harvest. The stage of fruit development that ensures reaching of harvesting at the right stage of maturity ensures appropriate sensory characteristics in the produce including consumer attractive flavor, color, aroma, texture and taste and the nutritional quality. Planning for packing, transportation, storage and distribution critically depends on the maturity of the commodity at harvest. Maximum edible quality is reached at the end of the ripening stage which is termed as maturity whereas the fruit attains a complete physical growth moving towards physiological maturity and continues ripening even after the detachment. When the plant part is ready for consumption by the consumer it is termed as horticultural maturity. Thus fruits that mature before harvesting continue ripening thereby undergoing numerous physiological and biochemical changes that results in improved aroma, taste and color. At this point, the fruits attain extreme palatability and fine quality. This stage is followed by senescence where a sequence of irrevocable changes occur leading to deteriorative changes in fruits rendering it unfit for consumption. Therefore, Minimizing the post-harvest losses is the foremost agricultural goal in today's rapidly growing population. Now, what are the post-harvest losses? In a hungry and increasingly competitive world, 
reducing post harvest food losses is a major agricultural goal for highly perishable commodities such as tomatoes squash and peaches as much as 30% of the harvested crop may be lost due to post harvest diseases before it reaches the consumer investments made to save food after harvest are usually less costly for the grower and the consumer and less harmful to the environment than the efforts to increase production even a partial reduction in post harvest losses can significantly reduce the overall cost of production and lessen our dependence on marginal land and other scarce resources many factors contribute to post harvest losses in fresh fruits and vegetables these include environmental conditions such as heat or drought mechanical damage during harvesting and handling improper post harvest sanitation poor cooling and environmental control efforts to control these factors are often very successful in reducing the incidence of diseases for example reducing mechanical damage during grading and packing greatly decreases the likelihood of post harvest disease because many disease causing organisms like pathogens must enter through wounds chemicals that have been widely used to reduce the incidence of post harvest diseases although effective many of these materials have been removed from the market in recent years because of economic environment or health concerns increased interest in the proper post harvest handling of fresh fruits and vegetables has prompted the widespread use of flumes water dump tanks spray washers and hydrocoolers to conserve water and energy most post harvest processes that wet the produce recirculate the water after it has passed over the produce this recirculated water picks up dirt trash and disease causing organisms if steps are not taken to prevent their spread these organisms can infect all the produce that is subsequently processed in the past various fungicides and bactericides have been used alone or in combination with chlorination to prevent the transmission of diseases these materials have often been favored over chlorination because they provide some residual protection after the treatment at present chlorination is one of the few chemical options available to help manage the post harvest diseases when used in connection with other proper post harvest handling practices chlorination is effective and relatively inexpensive it poses only little threat to the environment or the health fruit and vegetables that are fresh and have good flavor bring repeated sales and may bring higher prices too how produce is handled directly affects the freshness and in some produces how well peak flavor is retained for most produce maintaining cool temperature to slow down the deterioration and high humidity to prevent moisture losses are the most effective means of preserving quality however there are several things producers handlers and retailers can do to assure that fruit and vegetables going to the market or into storage are of high quality let us discuss about harvesting and handling of fruits and vegetables post harvest handling of agricultural commodities depends on the variety and the plant path to be handled generally preliminary handling determines the shelf life of the final product proper harvesting and handling to avoid cuts abrasions and bruising damage prevents the decay causing microorganisms to enter the tissue harvesting during the cool part of the day controls the rate at which the produce deteriorates use of trees or a shade cover in field wagons trucks nearer to the harvest area to prevent spoilage for commodities that lose quality rapidly and those to be shipped to the market special post harvest washing handling and cooling are required to maintain the quality 
Bruising should be avoided in transportation to the packing shed during unloading, washing and grading. Curing is an important step for shelf life extension of roots and tubers. Generally, roots and tubers are bruised during harvesting and this curing process heals the cuts caused since in curing these are stored at high temperatures and high relative humidity. Curing also induces the formation of new protective layer of cells. On field curing or curing in conditioned structures are the two processes by which roots and tubers are cured. Piling up in shaded areas in straw or grass or in even canvas or woven grass provides sufficient maintenance of temperature and relative humidity for a period of 3 to 4 days. On field curing or packing in large netted sacks is done for onions and garlic. In house conditioning installed with fans or heaters for maintaining the temperature and relative humidity is the latest in modern storage systems. Fans are also used apart from natural air passage in circulation of air throughout the storage area. Bulk storage bins are arranged within 15 cm spaced rows for adequate air ventilation. In adverse weather conditions like rain, flood, large tarpaulins or plastic sheets are used to construct temporary tents for storage of onions. Fans are also used to blow air throughout the store bulbs. Let us discuss about the operations prior to packaging of fruits and vegetables. Many preliminary treatments including washing, cleaning, disinfection, waxing and finally packaging are given to fruits and vegetables to improve the appearance and maintain the quality. The first step being washing and cleaning where the harvested fruits or vegetables are subjected to washing by passing over rotating soft brushes and conveyed to washing machines towards cleaning operation. Chemical treatments such as spraying of insecticides and pesticides along with the wash water and the fruits are passed onto a set of rotary sponge rollers. Water is removed from the washed fruits and vegetables with rotary sponges by passing them through a conveyor to the sponger. The disinfection of the fruits and vegetables is a step that follows washing by the use of disinfectant agents to avoid spreading of infection among consecutive batches of produce. Washing of citrus fruits is done in a soaking tank containing chemicals at suitable levels of pH and temperatures. Low concentration of chlorine solution may also be used as a disinfectant for many vegetable producers. The next step is artificial waxing which is used to prevent the loss of the natural waxy coating in fruits due to washing which is replaced by the application of artificial wax which minimizes the post harvest losses. The functions and advantages of artificial waxing are a protective coating is given over the entire surface of the fruit that extends the shelf life of the fruit. The small cracks, scars and dents in the rind or the skin is sealed. Moisture loss is prevented and natural respiration is retained. It also permits natural respiration the sales appeal is enhanced by a natural sheen provided by the artificial waxing. Next is the cooling methods and the temperatures that are used during storage. Cooling is a mandatory storage method that should be applied to fruit and vegetables to maintain a fresh like quality and for shelf life extension. Different methods of cooling are done which are explained as follows. The first method being the pre-cooling process where the safe transportation of fruits and vegetables require pre-cooling at a temperature of 3 to 6 degrees Celsius. Use of cold air and cold water known as hydrocooling or direct application of ice or by evaporative cooling and partial vacuum cooling are the different pre-cooling methods. An efficient method is a combination 
of cooled air and water termed as hydro air cooling. It's the latest trend in pre-cooling of the harvested produce. The first one being the air pre-cooling which is the most commonly practiced method of pre-cooling of fruits. It's with cold air. Refrigerator cars, storage rooms, tunnels or forced air coolers are the different methods of air pre-cooling. Next important method is icing where an ice slurry containing 60% of coarsely mashed ice and remaining percentage of water or crushed ice which is placed directly on the top of the crop and in this method it is practiced. Next comes the room cooling where a low temperature refrigeration unit and the fan to pass this cold air throughout the constructed room where the crop is placed. Air convention blowers are also used to blow air through the produce. The inexpensiveness involved in this construction and maintenance free facility makes it more usable by the farmers. The next method being the forced air cooling where the blowers or huge fans are employed to blow cool air through pipes or ducts from a considerable distance at high air velocities. Along with this humidifiers and cold water sprays or sprinklers are also fixed at the corner of the room to prevent chilling injury in the harvested produces. The next method is hydro cooling where cooling with cold water is practiced. Cooling of crops with cold water results in faster transmission of heat from the producers hence results in a minimal weight loss. When the crop is immersed in cold water or transported around the pack house in water where the transport can incorporate a hydro cooler to the produce a higher efficiency could be attained. Chlorinated water can also be used to prevent spoilage as well as to clean the crop. Hydro cooling is applied for hard and root vegetables because it is not suitable for succulent vegetables and fruits. The next method is the cooling under vacuum conditions where for every 5 or 6 degrees Celsius decrease in temperature, one percentage loss in weight of the produce takes place in vacuum cooling. This could be prevented by sprinkling the produce with water either in the initial stages or towards the end of the vacuum cooling operation which is termed as hydro vacuum cooling. Example of vegetables that could be stored in this method are cabbage, leafy crops, greens, etc. The next method is at storage at high temperature where the high temperature treatments are much suitable for root crops, onions, tubers, etc. Exposure of fruits to high temperatures in combination with ethylene or other gases is done to facilitate the ripening process. The next important topic in this discussion is storage. Storage of harvested vegetables and fruits in apt environment where humidity, ventilation and temperature extends the marketable life of products. The types of storage include in situ storage, postponing the reaping process till the produce is necessary and storing it in the natural soil environment is called in situ storage. In root vegetables like potato, cassava, etc., crops are allowed to remain under the soil in normal climatic conditions. The next method uses sand or coir where the commodity is stored underground with sand and covered with coir when longer storage periods are required. This is practiced in Asian countries and where the pit or trench is given a layered lining with straw or hay followed by filling with the vegetables. Ventilation holes are dug for airflow through the trench. The next storage structure is the clamp where the clamps are constructed at the sides of the field at 1 to 2.5 meter width. Potatoes are piled on the ground in a heapy layer on a layer of straw. The trench is bordered with ridge to drain any rainwater and the produce is allowed to be stored in the clamp. After few days the clamp may be covered with red soil. This is widely practiced in the United Kingdom and the European countries. Cellars are the next construction for storage. Cellars are generally constructed in the underground part of a house or building 
with proper ventilation and insulation. This is a traditional practice in cold climatic countries like Britain and Europe. The barns are the next kind of storage structures which are the sheds or temporary neophile storage and this is used for minor processing operations or sheltering domestic animals. The next inexpensive method to store the agricultural produces is evaporative cooling. This is a non-energy consuming system employed for cooling the freshly harvested produce where air is passed through the vents in the room through pads of water and the produce absorbs the coolness by emitting its heat to the cool water thereby reducing the temperature in the fruits and vegetables and providing a cool atmosphere of storage. The night ventilation is the next storage structure for bulk storage of the harvested commodities. This is used in hot climatic areas for using the variation in day and night temperatures and it is used as a mode of cooling the produce as well. The harvested produces are stored in well insulated rooms with controlled atmospheres and fans for blowing air across the entire room. Different atmospheres are set in according to the produce to be stored. Bulk storable and durable commodities like hard fruits, vegetables and even flowers are stored in this type of storage. The final step is packaging of the agricultural commodities. The primary function of a package is to provide protection to the contents with sufficient mechanical strength during handling, transport and stacking. The package must be able to handle all marketing requirements in terms of weight, size, safety and shape. The packaging films must be permeable to respiratory gases for freshness retention. Ease of handling, labeling and marketing is an important factor for packing fruits and vegetables. The design of the package should be aimed for easy disposal, reuse or recycling. The low cost and durable packaging is the latest need of the consumer with concern to environmental and disposal issues. Let us discuss about the classification of packaging. Different types of packages that are used to package fruits and vegetables are Number 1. The flexible sacks which are made up of nets or plastic, jute or even wire mesh. The second kind are the wooden crates or cartons which are made of fiberboard. Next comes the plastic enclosures followed by pallet boxes and containers for shipping of fruits and vegetables. A traditional method of baskets made of woven strips of leaves, bamboo, plastic etc. are also used. Discussing about the uses of packages, there are many uses of the different types of packaging materials. Packaging of produces like coconuts and root crops namely potatoes, onions, yams etc. are done with nets. Wooden crates or wire bound crates are used for citrus fruits and potatoes. Wooden field crates are used for softer producers like tomatoes and since wooden crates are resistant to adverse climatic conditions and strong enough to hold large fruits such as watermelons. Fiberboard boxes are used for packing of tomato, cucumber and ginger during transport. Since they are weightless and easy to handle, they come in a variety of colors and they are also used for packing a variety of fruits and vegetables. As high humidity affects the packing, fruits or vegetables should be well dried before this type of packaging is done. Though plastic crates are costly, but they are durable than wooden crates and are also reusable. Their smooth surface makes them easily cleanable and are hard in strength giving protection to products. They can withstand at extreme climatic conditions but also capable of damaging the soft fruits and vegetables owing to their rough surfaces thus calling for the need of the liners. The next type are the pallet boxes which are very efficient for transporting produces from the field to the packing house and it decreases the complete cost involved in transportation, packaging and unloading. They cannot be afforded 
by small producers because of the high initial capital investment. Let us summarize whatever we have seen. To conclude, we find harvest losses mainly occur between the initial and final stages of harvesting and the major losses are caused due to shattering. These include on-farm losses in steps like threshing, winnowing and drying as well as along the chain. The main source of livelihood of many people is agriculture. Approximately 70% of the people directly rely on agriculture as a mean of living and agriculture also contributes to the national revenue. Post-harvest loss minimization in agricultural products may contribute to a significant growth in the international trade of a country. In India, agricultural commodities like sugar, tea, rice, spices, tobacco, coffee, etc. constitute the major items of exports of countries that rely on agriculture. If there is a smooth development practice of agriculture, imports could also be reduced while export increases considerably. This helps to reduce countries' unfavorable balance of payments as well as saving foreign exchange. This amount may also be used to import other essential inputs, machinery, raw material and other infrastructure that is helpful for the support of a country's economic development. Thank you.